reachability is this topic. In reachability, we're looking at the concept uh, of controllability in a different way. So when we talked about controllability initially, we said, can we go from some initial state to some final state in a fixed number of steps? Okay, so that's what we are desired. Now, reachability is kind of different in that we start at the origin and we want to see, can we get to a desired final state at some final time? Okay. Now, often when we talk about reachability, we, 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 we may restrict our set of control signals, for example, bounded signals or so forth. But for now, we're going to start off with no restriction on, on the control signal. The control can be as large as desired. And theoretically, from, for a linear system, that's not a problem. Practically speaking, it is a problem because, practically speaking, you know, I can't apply a million volts to my system and expect it to survive, right? So, um, but for now, we're, mathematically, we're going to look at this as unrestricted. All right, so the reachable set, the set of points in the state space that can be reached. So, for example, here I have this system. What state positions can be reached through application of some control signal U? Okay, so by way of example, here are some signals that are applied to the system. In this case, we are applying signals that are bounded by magnitude one. I'm sorry, magnitude uh, looks like two and a half. Okay, and so applying each of these signals to the system, these are the various responses that I get out. Okay, so notice that this is this is the phase plane. So this is state x1. This is state x2. And notice that the state only moves in this direction. Okay, it only moves along that line. So even though I'm applying signals of different kinds, it it's still um, it still only causes me to move in this axis here. So in this case, using control, only a subset of the space is reached. And I can show that if I allow larger values of control, I can get this to extend further, but it will still extend along this line. So this shows that my system is control uncontrollable. I can't just reach any any uh, position in this state space. Now in the text, theorem 23.1 says the reachable subspace R, where U is unrestricted, is given by this. R is the range of the Gramian from 0 to TF. Now in, in proving this, this is actually proved for the um, discrete time system, but it could also be applied to the continuous time system. So here, uh, U is unrestricted. That is, we're not bounding its magnitude. We're not bounding its energy. So the reachable set at up to time TF is given by the controllability Gramian up to time TF. So notice that, for example, in discrete time, let's say you have a third order system, in general, your system might have to take at least three steps to get wherever it wants to go. Okay, because in general, it takes the controllability Gramian, it may take up to n steps for an nth order system to have full range. Okay, um, so in that case, we would definitely have a restriction regardless of how u is unrestricted. Okay, so. It can be shown that the reachable set is actually a subspace. And as such, it assumes that control signals could have infinite magnitude or infinite energy. Okay, So it's unrestricted. Now, for practical purposes, it's often helpful con to consider uh, a restriction on the kinds of controls. So for example, I could have, so x, the reachable set is the set of x, such that x is operated on by the control map, and the control is in some uh, admissible set, okay? Some set of signals that we allow. Here are some possible admissible sets. L1, which has, uh, remember L1 is an action signal, signals that are in L1. Signals in L2 are finite energy signals. Signals in L infinity are bounded signals. I could also consider power signals or energy, uh, finite energy signals or whatever. So uh, RM, finite RMS signals. So we have some admissible sets, okay? So in which case we redefine our reachable set based on whatever admissible set we're looking at. So here, 
I'm going to look at u being the set of signals that are bounded in the p norm by magnitude one. Okay, so so this is so we have defined the p norm for signals, and this says I'm going to have my admissible set be bounded by one. And so we want to find the set of R that uh, is the set of states that can be reached through this control map. Now, in general, we could also look at the infinite horizon problem. Um, but in general, the infinite horizon problem uh, is such that in order for you to have finite P norm, U has to go to zero as time goes to zero, in which case, generally speaking, at least for a stable system, uh, X has to go to zero. So in general, for the reachability set, we restrict our time horizon. Instead of going all the way up to infinity, we're going to stop at some time TF. Now, an important inequality that arises in this issue of reachability is what's called the energy inequality. So if I have my controllability Gramian, which is positive definite, and let X be uh, the control signal operated on by the control map, then we have this. The energy squared in the control signal from T0 to T is greater than or equal to this inequality. Okay, so, so that is, we have this energy inequality. So the energy in the, in the input signal is greater than or equal to this quantity. With equality, if and if, only if, for all t in this interval, u is given by this expression. So this is basically the pseudo-inverse of our control map operated on by x. Okay, so this is, notice this is actually uh, a state feedback uh, signal. So, so in, in particular, what's happening is um, what's happening is that the control signal. Um, uh, oh, so this inequality basically, I get equality here if I have a particular control signal. Okay, and so if I partic pick a a particular control signal, I can get equality in this, and so. Basically, this shows that um, this is provides a boundary for the control energy. So if we're given a stable controllable system, starting at some zero initial condition, for any time, final time, uh, x at tf, where b is operating on u, u is in our admissible set, I can show this is, this is the case. And if I bound this control by 1, so if our admissible set is that where the fi I'm looking at finite energy, in fact, not only finite, but energy bounded by one, then I can show that my reachable set is in fact this set. And this actually defines an ellipse, an ellipse, ellipsoid in n dimensions. So if I actually take my controllability Gramian and do a singular value decomposition on it, and if I redefine my variables, so instead of having x, if I use z, and I so this is my transformation matrix, which is notice is a non-singular matrix um, because s because k is positive definite because my system is controllable, s is positive definite, and so I have I can define this transformation on x, and I can show that this, which is an ellipse in x, can be written in terms of z this way. Here I say circle, but really it's it's a ball. It's a ball. And so this is just the norm of Z. And here I have this, this thing here. So this is an ellipse in X. This is a, so I can redefine my coordinates so that I can actually look at this in terms of a of a circle or a a, a sphere. A spheroid in, in dimensions. So that's the reachable set. Next, we'll talk about control, uh, canonical forms.